Hey, this is Chuck with Metalwani, and I'm talking to Steve Souza of Exodus. Steve, how you doing, man? How are you, Chuck? How you doing today? How's everybody doing? I'm doing fantastic. Um, I'm glad you're doing great. And uh, how's Tom doing? Tom is, we played last Thursday, actually. Awesome. We played it after Chalk Festival in Sacramento, and he killed it. And so he's, the doctor's giving him a clean bill of health. In fact, he doesn't even have to do his last four chemo treatments, so they got it all. So he's wow. just getting stronger, but he played with us. We did a 40-minute set last week at Aftershock Festival in Sacramento, yeah. and he killed it. He's so, uh, <laughs> Tom is back. Exodus is back. Tom is back. <laughs> That's awesome, man. He is a beast, man. Holy cow! He's a beast. And I knew it and when and when he got sick, and I found out because I knew months before he made it public, and that was uh, he called me one day and said, "Where's your email that no one will read?" And I said, "Oh, this is that one." And then he sent a long thing. We all found it out, and I was like, we were all shocked. And I said, "You know what? He's the strongest motherfucker I know." <laughs> <laughs> when we go on tour, he does the Rocky Four uh, uh, thing. He lives in the mountains. He chops wood. He plays his drums four hours a day. He does this whole regiment where he does this thing. Where I mean, just this whole up in the mountain thing. That's so cool. I knew he would beat it because he. There's nobody I know that's stronger than him. Really, I yeah. literally stronger than him, and I knew he was going to kick him in the face, and he did. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the uh, the new album Persona Non Grata is coming out on November nineteenth on Nuclear Blast, and I think I read somewhere um, that both you and Gary feel that the time off due to the pandemic made for a stronger album. And I was I was kind of wondering, was it? Do you think it's just the time, you know, the, the extra time to hone the music, or was it a combination of that time plus you know, like recording up at Tom's house and setting up that studio? Was it the combo of the both of those two, or or just the time, just to focus? We've recorded isolated before. We did uh, Impact is Imminent up in Mendocino and Albion and rented a house and did the whole thing there. And we flew to England and rented a house and, and did Force to Have It at Battery Studio. So we've isolated before, but it was always, all right, well, the producer's got this week because he's going to start th this many weeks because he's going to start another project after that. And somebody else is going to be in the studio and you guys are going to be on the road. So <laughs> that, th this way, there was none of that. I mean, there was like probably four instances, two months after we came home from the recording and went, Gary called me and goes, Zet, what do you think about this part in this song? <laughs> I'm like, mm, I think I could do it like this and do it a little better. Yeah, I think so too. Call one up and try it studio. Let's book a couple hours and have you go in and try, and try that. So we had time for it, like I mean, even me to go in and I probably from the initial recording went in the studio four different times to actually fix something or change something we heard that normally we would have been on the road or they would have been turned in or yeah. you know and because Andy Steve's our producer oh Andy had to go out with Judas Priest so he had to get this done so it has to be in by this day right we didn't have everybody was home the industry completely shut down at that time so we were very fortunate to uh um 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 you know go to uh up there and chill listen to it make sure it was right retweak it i mean i probably saw i should you not 16 different mixes or 16 <laughs> different mixes of the record because they wanted him they turned this up and they turned it down they turned it back up again they turned it back. A different part. it was just not being anal retentive but being having the actual time to make sure it was exactly right. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, it, and every song was that way. So it wasn't like we threw any fillers in there and, oh, here, throw another song up so just so we can get it in and done. Yeah. It wasn't like that. We had time. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, the, the album itself is another, you know, crushing example of Exodus. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the lyrical development on the new album. Um, what were some themes that really hit home for you that you guys are delving into in the lyrics on this one? Gary wrote a lot, most of the lyrics. And actually, Tom wrote one on this album. And um, when everybody reads the lyrics to it, he wrote the song, The Years of Death and Dying. And it's about death 
having no, you know, no prejudice on taking lives. And in the song, he mentions a lot of metaphors to other people in our business that, in fact, I sang a part of the song and then Eddie Van Halen died and I had, we rewrote a song, a part to go into the song to, to have to metaphorically and, and now that I, you know, well, I knew it then. Yeah. He got sick and he was looking at his own mortality, at, at, let alone he could have been one of the guys in the own song he ran, wrote. So that was really strange to me how that, I wrote Elitist and I wrote Slipping Into Madness, both kind of social aware songs, but Gary handled the rest of the lyrical writing. And Gary is always very socially, religiously, uh, politically aware, you know, of right. what's going on. So, and and we always do it very tongue in cheek. I mean, come on, you've got the meetings <laughs> will continue until morale improves. The first record you had, kick in your face and rape and murder your wife. I mean, yeah. you know, on bonded by blood, nothing has really changed since then. You know, what I mean? we went from being um, young, um, um, angst, pissed off youth as fucking old men and nobody even noticed the transition you know what i mean the music if anything think about think about it think about bonded yeah. and fabulous and think about persona non grata it's twice as brutal it's twice as brutal as those records there was your heavy those are thrash metal records not taking anything away from them they still yep. rock they still got roll to them but god listen to the fucking this album this album will fucking you know this album's not a nice record i mean you know you'll fucking you go crazy listening to this record. Yeah, you know, actually, you mentioned Elitist, and that's one of the tunes that I think it really stands out. Uh, I dig the the groove on that tune. Plus, I I like the the ferocity of it. So, can you what what influenced that? I have an idea, but I was curious what what it was for you. Elitist was more like um, when I heard the music, it was like very like yeah. so. I wrote it very arrogantly. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It wasn't like you're an elitist. It's like I'm an elitist. I this is how I want things now. <laughs> this is what I tolerate. And this is what I put up with. You know what I mean? Right. And it better be this way. And I, you know, I, 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 I obviously, I, 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 um, I exaggerated. I, so, you know, like the words in the song, um, "Ring on the bell to car for yeah. service, <laughs> bang on the gun to get the best cleaned up." Now it's like now, do it now. <laughs> I said, you know what? So basically, when I'm writing a song, that's the movie that's going in my head. Awesome. Uh, the lyrical. Again, another Exodus style, tongue in cheek uh, way to, you know, to, you know, kind of a, you know, uh, that one's a fun song. If any of them are fun or funny on the record, that one's probably the one where it's very arrogant, very written arrogant. And I'm going to lead us and fuck you. You know what I mean? Right. Yes, I want my mess clean up. Bang the gong, get here. Where's he at? Come here now, now, now. Where's the Uber? He's too late. You know, it just kind of, you know, identifies with them with the times. So yeah. It's kind of, or what's your, so that's kind of where that was come from a little bit. Cool. Uh, you know, I, I have to imagine that the energy of the crowd when you're performing a show, you know, amps up your intensity. But how do you get that intensity when you're working in the studio? What, what do you do to get yourself geared up for that? I think you visualize it. I think you think what as me as a fan what what's going to get me going what what triggers my you know triggers me first what what gives me that fucking you know like hey you know I oh this is going to be killer if I do it on watch they're going to go fucking I mean like Elite is a perfect example that when I'm writing that song I'm thinking of a total hardcore mosh pit you know what I mean? <laughs> And in my mind, that's what's going through my head. So I'm writing it very choppy like that. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. to shout it out, to yell back so it doesn't take away from you beating up anybody in the pit. <laughs> so very easy. It's not like, da, 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 like that's not like blood and blood and, or um, um, yeah, blood and blood out. Yeah. We're probably not got that jumping on a bit of a thing. It's not like that. It's like social climber, you know. Yeah. Kind of, kind of, yeah, 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 fuck you, you know, that's right. So, kind of, kind of the mentality. I was just explaining to someone prior, because my press is set up from 
top to bottom, the, album, <laughs> the interview before you, that um, um, I you go see Fleetwood Mac now and people sit there. I yeah. thought this was called rock and roll. <laughs> I think that what the great thing is about heavy metal is our fans have never lost sight of what truly rocking out or being rock and roll means. Yeah. You know, so in the 70s, you'd go to a Fleetwood Mac concert and they'd be pressed to the stage, to the front of the stage, and it would look like a rock concert. People bang, you know. Now you go see a band like that and everybody's sitting down all the way to the front. Well, yeah. where's the rock and roll? If I was to walk out on stage and play the music that I play and they were sitting in seats, I would say, yeah, it's time to hang this up. Yeah, I, I was at a show recently. It was, um, you know, more uh, kind of like Southern rock thing. And at first people were sitting and I'm like, what? And we were, we had, you know, fortunate enough to get front row seats. And we we're like, I'm not sitting. I'm going to stand up. You know, I'm sorry if it pisses somebody off behind me, but shit. But yeah. And that's, I, I, that's my take. It's like, you know, you know, you got, and I, I know Tom Petty's not with us, but that genre of rock, that kind of hard rock, from the 70s, I used to go to those concerts, used to have to fight my way to the rail to get a look at them from <laughs> right. 10 feet away. You know, now, all you need is, you know, $800 to buy the seat right at the front row right. and sit down the whole fucking show. It's like rock and roll. This is not rock and roll. This is sit down and go, yeah, we went and saw Fleetwood Mac last night. Yeah, did you stand up and start dancing to right. you know, anything don't stop thinking about tomorrow or, you know, or, you know, any of their... Killer songs, go see anything off rumors, kicks ass. Yeah. You know, break the vein, whatever. You know, it's just like, come on. You know, I, I, to me, and I'm just, and I'm not bagging on them. I love that band. I just noticed one time when I was watching on the yep. Access channel, there, everybody was, it was a fucking arena full of people, and they're Sitting. clapping after the song. Nobody's like, <laughs> Whistling, nobody's going, hey, that bro, and throwing shit up on stage, hey, spitting at me. That's what I want. That's what you paid for. Fucking come on, bring it. Right. Uh, you know, I watched uh, you and Chuck Billy yesterday on uh, Toxic Vault talking about the yeah. post postponement of the Bay Strikes yes. Back with Testament and, you know, Death Angel out to uh, spring of next year. Um, I think you guys made the right decision, but I, I have to imagine that was super tough. Was was everybody on board, or was there some convincing and cajoling you had to do? I think everybody understood. There wasn't one person, because Chuck, Tiffany, Will Carroll, so many people came back from Europe a year or 20 months ago compromised. Yep. So they knew what it was like to get sick on the road. And again... Like we explained, you know, we're in on all the tours because this is what we do. We find out. We knew what was going on on the Megadeth, you know, yeah. uh, Trivium, uh, Hatebreed, uh, Lamb of God thing. We knew because we're all friends with them. Nobody else does. All they see is the concert happen every night. But they don't know the bus drivers are getting sick. They're not knowing the crew ears, you know. And so our take was as well, I remember I was talking to Jamie, and Jamie's telling me, um, um, yeah, me and Randy are texting bus back to each other, I'm like, wait a minute, you're back there texting, your buses are right, so yeah, that's how strict it is right now, I'm like, yeah. well, that's like no fun, I don't want to do that, and the level of tour that Testament, Exodus, and Death Angel, we're not playing the rooms, there's not the amenities that the sheds have, you know what I mean, yeah. so, you know, it's like, so it's like, you know, they're playing amphitheaters, we were in, we're in 2,500, 3,000, 1,500, 20, the we're going to be on top of each other. Chuck Billy gets sick, tour over. Gary Hope gets sick, tour over. So did you want us to try to go out? Everybody we know that to this day that has gone on tour, even though you know it or not, has somebody has gotten sick and had to come in and get a fill-in driver or a fill-in the roadie or a fill-in this. Yeah. And we just didn't want to deal with that. So we, we, we will definitely honor, even if it hasn't changed at that point, which we... Hopefully, time, it's another six fucking months from now, so hopefully right. time will help that out and vaccinations and, and, and boosters or whatever needs to happen with that uh, goes on and then it'll it'll be, but we are going to honor it regardless if that doesn't happen. I already told Chuck, which we like we told the fans yesterday, we are definitely going to go out and honor it. So, cool. um, you know, just wanted to explain to everybody kind of what happened. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's very cool. Um, you know, I, I think uh, you've been doing that the toxic uh, vault for like two years. It's really fun. I like yeah. I, I mix yeah. in. It is fun. Like you it know, fun. It, 
talking to people that you know, uh, which I was really, I, I thought was great when you talked to the guys in Forbidden because that's one of my most favorite bands. And uh, um, But I also like that you cover movies. And I was wondering if you could throw out a couple of like underrated movies that you think are gems that you would recommend. Horror? Because I'm a horror guy. I go see everything horror. But, uh, um, i seen this. Um, it's on... Um, I think it's on Amazon for free. I believe it's called The Witch. It's uh, it's a European movie. It is very scary. It is very creepy. It is awesome. I go see everything. In fact, the, I, I, I don't know. In the United States, there's this thing, movie company called Regal. And we have Regals around where I live. In yeah. some, you know, own theaters. And for $23 a month, you can go to unlimited movies. And so wow. I go to the movies all literally all the time <laughs> all the time i since april they just sent me a thing today i've been to the movies 31 times since april seriously so I, yeah 31 <laughs> i've seen 31 movies at the theater since april i love the movies i love the smell i love the look i love the sound i love every love the posters i love everything about it that's never changed since i was a kid awesome i, I, I love it so i i go and i want like this whole week I've watched The Mummy, I've watched Dracula, I've watched Frankenstein, all the originals. I constantly watch, I'm a horror guy, so I'm, I, 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 I love, even though those are my least watched episodes, <laughs> I tell everybody, I don't care if you don't like, me, like my movie reviews, don't fucking watch them. <laughs> but I go see everything, you know what I mean? I, I yeah. pretty much, it's, it's kind of what I do. Yeah, I think it's fun. Uh, I was wanted to ask a, kind of an origin question, and that is, uh, what was the first concert you ever went to? Kiss. 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 Elvis died. Oh, really? Seventy-seven at the Cow Palace in San Francisco. I was thirteen years old. Ken Orman's mom took us. <laughs> I just read in the paper uh, six months ago. She passed away. Oh, but when I saw it, it blew me away. I'm like, oh, that was the lady that took me to my first. <laughs> concert ever awesome so yeah kiss the day Elvis died love gun tour 15 uh, years old <laughs> that's awesome uh how about the very first album you ever bought with your it, it could have been a gift or uh, money you you know made eight years old on. birthday present my father bought me uh, led zeppelin four really? and i'm in 1972 holy i shit. was eight <laughs> yeah i that's why the kind of music everybody who knows me from a childhood, all tell me, I knew you were going to do this, Sousa. I knew it. I knew it. If there was anybody I would have said that would Because, I mean, I'm everybody's listening to the Jackson 5 and the fucking Osmond brothers and the DeFranco family. And I'm, like, listening to Alice Cooper and, and Led Zeppelin and the Allman brothers and Black Sabbath. My father was a biker. Oh, uh, cool. In the garage in the, late, in the 60s. Well, until he's now in Harley Heaven. Until he died, he was a biker. But when he worked on his motorcycles, I would go out in the garage while he worked on stuff, and he, that's the type of music he listened to. So that's when, when I first heard Stairway to Heaven and the very end of the song where it gets heavy and the lead guitar and Robert Plant gets in the, and, and there's a wino down the road. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that's what I thought he said. And there's a wino down the road. I was like, well, I, I sounded right. I, I just thought I'd never heard anything like that before. Yeah. musically and that's what probably caught my ear and that's why i'm heavy metal that is why i am and after that anything that had edge to it from ted nugent to acdc to Errol smith anything that had teeth yeah. ufo scorpions because i mean again i'm listening to stuff 75 76 rainbow anything that had teeth i wanted to listen to fantastic i love it uh so, Steve, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I've, I've just got you, one last question for you. Um, sure. Slightly controversial. Um, pineapple or no pineapple on pizza? No pineapple. No pineapple. No, no. I'll check this out. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> I'll take it off because I like the sweetness that it leaves on top of the Canadian bacon or the ham. But I don't like the texture biting into it into the pizza see i'm the texture guy it doesn't necessarily have to be the flavor ah what's he say in, in, uh, in uh, that one zombie apocalypse movie he's all coconut not yeah. the taste the texture <laughs> and it's the truth i don't and i'm that same thing with coconut i don't mind the flavor 
I just don't like the raw texture. I love coconut if you roast it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I grind grinding me, so <laughs> no. But I, I'll, I'll eat it. But as soon as I'm, oh yeah, they have Hawaiian pizza. I'll take my piece and pull every piece of pineapple off. But I like the sweetness that it leaves. Is that weird? I yeah. Know. Well, yeah. You know, that's a that's a first for me because I'm. You know, most people are like they're definitely into it, sweet and savory. They love it. Um, but you're a sweet and savory guy, but you don't like the texture, so that's new. All right. So that's why, I, again, I don't mind if it's there. I take them up, so when I do bite into the piece of pizza, there is the little sweet, <laughs> but it's not the texture of biting in the actual piece of fruit. Fruit has no business on a pizza. <laughs> awesome. Uh, uh, Steve, again, thank you so much, and uh, can't wait to see you guys on the road. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. See ya. Take care, bro.